triumphal entry of Palm Sunday. I remember as I read in the scripture that some people took some palm trees and others even their clothes and they lay for Jesus. Let's pretend, let's reconnect what happened that time. Just go ahead and worship God. You can run around, you can move around, you can just shout to the name of the Lord as we sing this song again. We have some palm trees over there.
you're talking about. Jesus who made a sacrifice became the sacrificial lamb so that today we can stand here worshiping freely knowing that we have a king who is the king of all kings. He is the Lord of all lords. We know that when we call his name things happen change. That's the Jesus we're talking about. Jesus, you may lift an eye. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Today is a very important day in our history, in our salvation. It marks the beginning of the final week of Christ's life on earth. And as he was entering into Jerusalem, the multitudes, they lined the streets and they cried out, Hosanna! Hosanna! What's your cry today? What's your cry today? What, what has he done for you? What does he mean to you? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm excited because without this, I would surely be lost. We're temporarily, temporarily resigned in this world. But can you imagine if this was where we had to be permanently? If God didn't come and put in these provisions, and there's no future, there's no hope of eternity with him. I don't know about you, but I'd be very miserable. That's the significance of today. Nevertheless, he faced it. It's like, God, not my will, but thine, but done. Because he loved us so much. And his mission was to redeem us. And in spite of the difficulty of the challenges, he followed through. And today we are celebrating. Hallelujah. I said today we are celebrating. <laughs> Hallelujah. Today is a celebration because Jesus came. Hallelujah. He showed up and he brought salvation to us. Hallelujah. Lord, as we come before your presence, we come humbly, Lord Jesus. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for making this sacrifice. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you thought of me, Lord Jesus. You loved me even when I didn't love you, Lord. And so you made provision, Lord Jesus, for me. So that I can have salvation, Lord Jesus. 
I can look forward to spending eternity with you, Lord. And so we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your provision. Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you touch this word today, Lord Jesus. You speak, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, you deliver what your people need to hear, Lord Jesus. And take all the glory. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Today is a celebration. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a celebration. And I'm excited. I'm ex I don't know. You don't sound excited. I'm excited. I'm celebrating today. Hallelujah. We're celebrating the triumphal entry. Hallelujah. When I was growing up, um, I'll tell you a short story. When I was growing up, I, I lived in a rural community. And, you know, dignitaries and important people, you only see them on the TV. Right? You might hear them on the radio. But you never actually see them in person. And when I was a teenager, um, the prime minister of the country, he came through my town. And it, w it was a very special moment because that's the first time that we would be seeing the prime minister in person, right? And you know the prime minister, the president of your country, that's a very important guy or lady, right? Very important person. And so what happens? People pull out all the stops, right? There's, there's a big celebration. Um, if you have time, you're going to cook the best meal, hoping that you'll stop at your house versus somebody else, right? You put on your best dress because you want to be presentable, right? And if you have time, you're going to clean the streets, you're going to do a little painting, you're going to touch up, right? Because this person that's coming is important, and so you want to put your best foot forward. It's the same with Jesus. When Jesus came and the multitude was with him, they brought their best foot forward. It was, it was so incredible. Think about this. We see this on TV from time to time. And if a dignitary visits another um, country, those in the receiving country, they roll out the red carpet. And with the red carpet comes some type of cultural presentation. It could be song or dance. They give gifts. They, they want to present their best foot forward, right? And when we think about the triumphal entry and the fact that people were laying their clothes so Jesus wouldn't have to walk on the ground. They're waving palm branches, but Think about it, the respect that Jesus commanded. How important people of that time recognized that he was. And my question today, to you today is, do you recognize that importance? Can you recognize that importance? Is he important to you? If Jesus was to put in his appearance today, what will be your reaction? What will be your response? We're celebrating today a very, very important day. And I just ask you that question to get you to think. So you can understand that Year after year, we celebrate this Palm Sunday, and we might go through the motions, but it's more than that. It's so much more than that. It's way more important than that. Amen? Back in the day when um, Jesus showed up, there was a multitude, as we read in the scriptures. And in the multitude... You know, you have different type of people or with different motives. 
And just to name a few, there were some who were supporting, and they were excited to see him. And there were the opposers, they did not want to see him. Right? And then there are some who they support, but not for who he is, but for the benefits that he can offer. Because they, they have heard about the miracles, they have heard about the food, all the kind of stuff. Some people were there for those temporal things. And then there are those who they are on one side or the other. They couldn't care less. If you, if you translate that to today, we have supporters, disciples, Christians, and we support our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and in supporting him, we have decided to follow him. And then there are the, the opposers, who we know what they're saying. They try to take Jesus out of school, they're trying to take him out of the, of, of the money, they're trying to do all these things. They are opposers. And then there are those who they will show up in church week after week, day after day. They listen to service and message after service, but they just keep coming and they have not made a decision. They're coming, so they're, they're not doing some of the more wretched things that we would see in the world. They come to church, but they still, they, they have not accepted Jesus Christ. And today, my, my message to you today is that we have to make a decision. We have to make a decision, and we must. I encourage you to choose to be a supporter of Jesus Christ. And I encourage you not to let his sacrifice go to waste. The scripture says that there is nothing new under the sun. And so we see a repeat of some things that we have seen in the past. And so these are things that we have to take as examples. Uh, when I was, you've probably heard this, but um, there's a saying that you should learn from your mistake. And when I was older, I heard somebody say, learn from other people's mistake. And it's a very smart thing, right? Because why do you want to experience something bad just so you can learn? If you've seen other examples of people suffering the consequences of their bad um, decisions and choices, why not learn from that? And so today, that's the encouragement. There are many stories, many examples in the Bible. And if you look around today, you see there are many examples of people who have decided not to follow after Jesus Christ. They have decided to do things of the world, and they had suffered the consequences. Now, that is not my pronouncement to you that you will suffer bad consequences, but I'm encouraging you that you will make good choices, learn from those mistakes, so that you don't have to suffer those consequences. And the way to do that is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you have already accept, ac accepted him, you need to continue on the path. You need to stay the course. Amen? On last Wednesday, we talked about several records of this event, the triumphal entry, and how they differ slightly from each other. Now, these differences are not because they're, they were uncertain or because they were confused. They differ because they were written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, with each author addressing a specific audience. And just in the way of review, we talked about how Matthew, um, he wrote to the Jewish audience. And in so doing, he quoted a lot of the Old Testament. Because the Jews, they, they, they adhere to the law. And so if you wanted them to listen to you, you must quote the Old Testament, right? And then we talk about Mark, how he wrote to, the Roma, to a Roman audience. And uh, back then, the, the Roman Empire, they were the empire of the day. And so... It, if you can, if you lead up um, into the crucifixion, the reason why the temp the earth, the reason why Jesus was crucified, was because he was going against the the Roman religion. And so, if you're writing to a Roman audience, you're going to be careful how you word things, right? So it's not contradicting 
but you have to be careful. You have to word things so that the audience you're writing to um, understand what you're saying. And we talk about how Luke wrote to a broader um, Gentile audience. However, the one thing that was common among all accounts, every single one that you read, is that the king is come. The king is come. And that's our topic for day, today. The king is come. If we look at Matthew 21 verse 5, it reads, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you. That's a Matthew account. In Mark 11 verse 9, it says, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Luke 19 verse 38, it says, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. You see what's coming, the king is come. John 12 13, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the king of Israel. Now, when the king makes an appearance, it is not just an ordinary appearance. There's cheering, there's clapping, there's singing, dancing, because the king of me, he has made an appearance. And in his kingly demeanor and aura, he demands the best from you, from the audience. And as we saw in the scripture, there were some accounts of um, a couple actions that we'll talk about next. And we talk about, the first one is the displays of approval. So in the multitude, people approved. Uh, Matthew 21 verse 8 says, And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Mark 11 says, verse 8, And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And I can say from this morning's worship, we are among the supporters. Amen? Because we are crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hallelujah. Now there were those who opposed. Luke 19, verse 39, he talks, he says, it reads, And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Now I want to say that if we take this practically, there are some people in your circle who will show up at whatever you are um, spearheading. And you may think they are there to support you, but they aren't really. The Pharisees were among the multitude. And some of us, we have businesses. We might have talks. Um, we have different things. And some people will show up and you think that by showing up, they're there to support you. And that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes you're there just to find a reason to distract you and discourage you from what you're set out to do. And so you have to be vigilant and make sure that you remain grounded. And so if you take this back to the spiritual life, there are those among you who will pretend to be your friend and they will appear as if they're holy but their words, their language are not. And you must be vigilant to make sure that these people are not among you. And if and when they are, that you are influenced them and not the other way around. Amen. So we saw that the Pharisees, they were there in the crowd, but the goal was to quiet the crowd. But the king that Jesus is, he did not argue with him. He did not cower on the pressure. And, you know, we're living in a time where the Bible is just playing out in front of us. 
and we see many and some that we don't expect any better from they flip-flop as they feel a mind and then there are some that we expect it better from and they know better but they have had elevated opinions their understanding has elevated and so all of a sudden the thing that they believed preach and teached for many years has changed the word is the same yesterday today and tomorrow it doesn't change and I don't understand oh you could read the, read the same word and have a contrary opinion of it or come to a contrary conclusion so Jesus did not cower under pressure the other thing he did not care what they were saying we, we have some people that um, especially in the social media age, the digital age uh, you go on social media it's one of the reasons why, why bullying has become so prevalent because we have a generation of people who we cater so much to other people's opinions and so if somebody says something to you and you don't like it then you try to make some amends whether um, that amendment is good for you or not and I'm encouraging you today that you must stick to the word it doesn't want na matter what naysayers are saying if it's not biblical if it doesn't align to the word you have to reject it amen, amen. Jesus acted in his authority and he gave a response to his opposers and when he responded I did not see where they had any comeback Luke 19 verse 40 says but he answered and said to them I tell you that if these should keep silent meaning the multitudes the stones would immediately cry out now I, I, I don't know about you but I saw that we know this scripture it's very familiar but there's no way that a stone will cry out on my behalf and I encourage you not to let a stone cry out on your behalf now you, you I don't know where you are in your walk and um, we're all at different stages in our walk and some you know the baby steps and you know sometimes we are we have been walking for 15 years but we're still babies right and so when I say baby step or if you're mature I'm not talking about the number of years that you've been serving I'm talking about maturity right and so it may take you a minute to stand up you might see the worship going on and you're just standing there my encouragement is to you do not let these chairs cry out on your behalf the scripture uses rock but a rock is an inanimate object a chair is an inanimate object the speakers whatever it is do not let them cry out on your behalf amen, amen. these chairs will be a witness against you we have acknowledged that he is the king of kings the lord of lords what's preventing you from giving the highest praise what's preventing you from worshiping him don't let the rock cry out on your behalf amen Jesus commands reverence and because of that his disciples it says that my sheep know my voice and if you are his you will understand it you will know his voice and you have you have have you ever um, well try to recall that instance where you had an encounter with Jesus I remember my first true encounter with Jesus and I tell you that I've, I've never taken drugs but I've heard people talk about it about being I and this is better I was walking I remember I was walking home I was walking home from a crusade and the, it was raining and uh, there are potholes right in the road and those potholes had water in them 
and I remember walking and just gliding over potholes. That's what an encounter with Jesus, it can lift you. That's how powerful Jesus is. That's the Jesus that we serve. Amen. That's how powerful Jesus is. That's what he commands. And that's what will tra be translated in your life. And it, it, is, it should be your desire that day after day that you seek to get to that place. Which means you have to have a relationship with him. Amen. Jesus commands and demands true worship. And he demands that we cry out with utterances of praise and adoration because he is king of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. My question to you, will you be silent? Or will you utter a praise? Will you be silent? Can you make a commitment that you will not be silent? Hallelujah. This song says, And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. And I will, and I will not be silent. Clear and I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as I'm breathing. Can you, can you make a, that declaration today? I will not be silent. Mm. Kyle will not be silent. Put in your name, say, I will not be silent. And as long as I'm breathing, I'm going to worship Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you declare, I will not be silent. Hallelujah. As long as I'm breathing, I will worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Palm Sunday was one of the series of events that together completed the redemption of man and gave us the adoption of sons so that we may inter inherit eternal life. There are some important things that we must understand in order to commence 
or to continue with our salvation and relationship with Christ. The first thing is that do not stop at the historical Palm Sunday. Do not stop there. The king came and is currently here and deserves um, our reverence and celebration today. See, as much as they worshipped and glorified God on that first Palm Sunday, today we have to do that and even more. The scripture says, I will go with you to the end of the earth, and I will never leave you or forsake you. Another scripture says in Matthew 18, 20, it says, For where two or three are gathered together, in my name I am there in the midst of them. Now, if you think about Palm Sunday, he was among the multitudes, and they were crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes. And the scripture says now that if, we are, if there are two or three touching anything in his name, he's in the midst. We are, we are talking about Jesus, right? Okay, and we are more than, two, I can count a little, we are more than two or three. What will your response be? You should be jumping out of your seat and say, Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You reign supreme. Hallelujah. What will your cry be? And so today, in today's life, as you continue, Jesus, the physical Jesus, the, the, the human form, he came and he did what he did 2,000 years ago. But today, he is living in your heart. And so you, Palm Sunday has to be every day, not just once a year. Historical Palm Sunday, that specific day, the first one, was a set of events to bring salvation to us. But today we have salvation. And if he did that so we could have salvation, what will we do or what should we do now that we have salvation? We should be even more rejoicing. Amen? We should be rejoicing even the more. Second thing I want to touch on today is Jesus is looking at your heart. Jesus came so that we can have life and we can have it more abundantly. And with his coming, he changed a couple of things. First, let me, me back up a, a bit. As you talk about the historical um, Palm Sunday, there's one important thing that we must bear in mind. And we have to take absolutely serious. The historical Palm Sunday set off events that brought us salvation. But then there's another one coming. The scripture doesn't say, but from what the, the scripture um, is saying, I deduce that there will be another one. And that one is even more important. Because that one will determine where you spend eternity. Revelation 7 verse 9, it says, After these things, I looked and behold a great multitude, which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues. Standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Does that sound like the first Palm Sunday? Sounds very familiar. Now we have salvation. And so I encourage you that you pay attention to these. And you continue to adhere by the word of God. Because this second one is going to be the most important one. You want to be spending eternity with Christ. Amen. And so we, I want to be up among that multitude. I don't know about you. I want to be counted among that multitude. Amen. Now the second point I want to talk about is Jesus is looking at your heart. And there was a time when there were outward displays of um, affection and um, reverence towards God. We made sacrifice, or the children of Israel, they made sacrifices. 
and there were the killing of the of animals, shedding of blood. Now, Joel 2 verse 12 reads, Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness. What this is saying is that the things that you did in the past, Jesus came and he was the ultimate sacrifice. His blood is holy blood. You need it. It only was required once. Once. If you go back to the Old Testament, there had to be um, sacrifices every year, every so often, to remit sins. But to, to make atonement. But today, when Jesus came and he died, he shed enough the blood. Only, only had to do it once. And because of the shedding of the blood, we have salvation. And so now, the doors are open where we can go to the Father directly and we can ask of him whatever we, we may. And what he's saying is that I used to dwell in a physical temple. There was the Ark of the Covenant, not the temple. I am the temple. I am the temple. And so, as, as he's looking at you, he's not judging what you're wearing. He's not looking at the things you're doing. He's looking at what's in your heart. Now, we, we have seen Hollywood movies. We have some really good actors. And just without training, you didn't have to go to school. We, we are born being very good actors. We can pretend. We can show up and pretend to do one thing, but in our heart, we're saying something else. And Jesus is saying, I'm looking at your heart. And so we have to pay attention to what's in our heart. Are you hiding the word in your heart so you won't sin against them? Jesus' sacrifice is important. He does not want it to go down the drain. And so he wants us to live a holy lifestyle, not pretend to be. He wants us to actually do it, and it comes from inside out. Amen? There's a story of a, a little boy who was in church, and as parents, we all experience this. They're misbehaving in church. Right, so this little boy, he was standing on the seat, and his mom was trying to get his attention. Hey, you need to sit down. And at the fourth attempt, the child finally sat down. And so the mom, you know, went back to worship. But I guess he was, you know, a little too silent. So she glanced at him, and when she glanced, he had this mischievous grin on his face. And the mom asked him, are you okay? What's going on? And the child responded, physically, on the outside, I'm sitting down, but inside I'm standing. I say this story, not for the joke of it, but to show you how important what is in your heart is. We can come to church, we can dress the part, look the part. Jesus is saying that, I'm looking at the art. Because what you show me might not be the truth. What you're showing to others might not be the truth. So, with the art. Amen. The third point I want to bring up is that we must bear godly fruits. If you are a disciple or a follower of Jesus Christ, you must be a Christ-like fruits. Matthew 7 verse 16 says, You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit 
nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Now, again, we are at different journeys, different levels in our Christian walk. Some of us are still babes. Some are toddlers, right? Some of us are teenagers. Some, are, some of us are full-grown adults. Some of us are seniors. Not talking about your age. Talking about spiritual maturity. And at each level, it doesn't matter what your level, at that level you must bear Christ-like fruits according to that level. Now my encouragement to you is that you grow quickly, but where you are right now, even if, if you're a toddler, you must bear Christ-like fruit. Um, if you take, for example, agriculture, and you start with a seedling of an orange tree, and you plant that seed, it starts to, to spring up and it starts to grow. As soon as you can see a leaf, you can recognize that's an orange tree. It's not at the point yet where it's blossoming or it's bearing any fruit, but you will know that's an orange tree. I have never seen a young orange tree that later matures to be a palm tree. Never seen it. So even as a young tree, you can see based on the color of the leaf, based on the, the, the size of the leaf, certain characteristics, you can tell that's an orange tree. And those character, characteristics, it, they don't change. When they get older, when they start blossoming, when they start bearing fruit, those characteristics will be the same. And so what am I saying to you today? Whether you're a brand new Christian or whether you've been here for many years, at your level, you must bear godly fruits. Today, it's all good and well that we're waving palm branches. And I'm not discouraging that. But what is more important is the health of your art, your spiritual growth and development, your soul. You can come and you can wave, and you're waving and you're thinking about dinner, and you're thinking about the drive home, you're thinking if, if somebody's breaking in the car, so many things. And so waving the branch doesn't signify what's inside. What's inside. God is calling us for more than just mere actions. He's calling us for true worship. Amen? For what he sacrificed, he needs true worship from us. Can you bring today, can you make yourself a sacrifice? Are you able to declare that, God, I'm going to do more than just show up. I'm going to work on spiritual growth and development. I may be at a 60%, I want to get further. I may be at a 10%, I want to get further. Can we make that declaration today? I have more than a song today. I brought myself. I am the sacrifice. I have more than a song today. I brought myself. I am your worship.
Jesus came and made a sacrifice for you and me. And today the results of the sacrifice is alive and well as it was back then. Jesus is seeking communion with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. Will you come today? Will you start the journey today? And if for those who have been on the journey, will you come and make a recommitment to the Lord today? John 3, 16 to 17, it says, And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Start reading for 15. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Revelation 7, 9 for emphasis. After these things I looked and behold a great multitude, which no one could number, of all the nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb of God. I invite you today, if you so choose, if you would if you don't mind coming to the altar to refresh your commitment if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior I invite you to come as well hallelujah I have more than a song today I brought myself I am the sacrifice I have more than a song this morning because of his presence in our midst and he has given us what is called the present truth the man of God opened up himself to present what this day is all about a day of decision this is a day of decision decision that will determine your destiny it calls for response a message like this is not just a message to listen to. It's a message to respond to. God created you and I to know him and to worship him with our lives. But man walked away from that. 
Jesus came and died so that we shall be restored. This is the celebration of today. God is calling you now to make that decision to come back, return unto him, so that you will be that sacrifice presented to God for worship. Then you begin to know who he is, you begin to serve him with your life and enjoy God himself. Anybody here today who have not made peace with God, if you want to commit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, let me see your hands. Let's heaven see your hand this morning. If you want to be born again, if you are not being born again, if you want the Lord to give you his spirit, grant you salvation, this is the moment. Would you raise up your hand unto the Lord? Let him see. I'm not going to ask you to come out, okay? But the moment is from your heart, just like the speaker said. It is what is in your heart. Would you decide to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior this morning? And he will give you eternal life. Would you pray this prayer with me now? If you wholeheartedly open your life unto the Lord, would you repeat after me and mean it to be your prayers unto the Lord? My Father and my God, I thank you for your word this morning. Lord, I come back to you. I respond to your invitation. I confess I'm a sinner. But I plead for your mercy to forgive my sins. Lord Jesus, I open my heart unto you. I invite you to come in to be my Lord and my Savior. I surrender to you to follow you through my life. Thank you for hearing my prayers and granting my requests. In Jesus' name I pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you Thank you for these hearts, O oh God, that have opened up unto thee, that have requested, O oh God, for salvation of their life. Lord Jesus, you said in your word that he that cometh unto you, you shall in no wise cast him away, but you will receive him, O oh God, forgive his sin and cleanse him from all un unrighteousness. Lord, these hearts that have opened unto you, O oh God, we pray that you will accept them today. We pray that thy Holy Spirit will perform the work of regeneration, the work of being born again, O oh God. May they realize it, O oh God. May they see it in their life that the power of transformation has happened and they are new creation in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you for accepting them. And to us who have been believing, oh God, we surrender ourselves unto you. As it has been determined to be a historical fact that Jesus Christ, on this day, a little over 2,000 years ago, went to the city to have the city, a people to make the final decisions of whether Jesus Christ is their Messiah or not. But they failed. But to us today, oh God, we shall not fail in the name of Jesus. We have opened our hearts and accepted you to be our Lord and Savior. 
May we continue to stand on that ground. May we continue to persevere, oh God. You promised us the Holy Spirit that will be our helper, that will help us to continue to believe. Because you said that if we shall continue in your world, then we are your disciples indeed. Help us to continue, oh God, to stand our ground. No, notwithstanding, if the world surrounding us are falling apart, may we stand our ground, oh God, because you are a faithful God. He that believeth to the end shall be saved. Lord, may it be so with us even this morning in the name of Jesus. This morning of decision making, Lord, we have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, eternal God. Notwithstanding any distractions or confusions that come our ways, oh God, we have decided to follow Jesus even unto the end. In Jesus' name we declare. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for your servant whom you've used mightily today. We ask that you bless him, oh God. We pray that you refill him again, oh Lord, and reuse him, Heavenly Father, at the appropriate time to your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand this morning. Give the Lord Jesus Christ a hand. Jesus is our Lord. Hallelujah. Because the King has come. Because he has come. And we have opened our heart this morning to receive him. Hallelujah. And when the King comes, he rubs off his blessings upon his subjects. Amen. You see, when the politicians come around, they, what, what would they be saying? They'll be promising you this, I'm promising you that, I'm promising you that. Everybody will be jumping up and down. And uh, after, you will see them until the next four years. Then they will come back again. And uh, nobody has the God to ask them, what about what you told us about last time? And they promise again. Everybody will open, say, he said this. But the King of the kings and the Lord of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says it is easier for the heaven and earth to pass away for his, a jot of his word not to be fulfilled. That means for his word not to be fulfilled, he's ready to banish the heavens and the earth. See the extent of that assurance. Hallelujah. It is easier for him to say, heaven and earth pass away than for his word not to be fulfilled. So anything he says in the scriptures shall surely come to pass. That's why we encourage ourselves to take him at his word. When you hear that word, don't harden your heart. Bible says, as he was in the day of provocation. Open your heart, receive it, and live by it, and walk by it. It shall be well with you. In Jesus' mighty name. Okay, now we shall come before the Lord to worship him with our tithes and offering. That's one of the things you give to the king. When the king comes to you, you do what? You give gifts to the king. And here we have come this morning. I remember the scripture that says that you shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. So when we are going for service, we know that we are going to do some sacrifice. And this morning, the Lord is not asking you for goat or ram or cow. The Lord is asking you from the bottom of your heart the appreciation that you have for him to come and express expresses by uh, with a tangible substance to be obedient in paying your tithe to the Lord and giving your offering which is the expression of the love you have for him so this morning I encourage you to come yes. myself I'm obligated to do or to come yes. my job is not only to say it but I have to do it 
Hallelujah. Amen. So let us open our hearts this morning as we come joyfully. Remember our God, the God we serve, loves a cheerful giver. Someone who will come with flower on his faces, you know, uh, saying, Lord, I appreciate what you've done in my life. With this token, I, I am grateful and I thank you this morning. Shall we all stand, please? Shall we all stand if you can? If you need an envelope, you can raise up your hands and the ushers will give it to you. Praise the Lord. And with the content inside of it, you ask the Lord to accept it at thy hands. You pray that God will accept your offering. Because there are many offerings and tithes that are not acceptable to God. But Lord, accept our gifts this morning. As we shall give it unto the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. May we face the eyes as we follow the direction of the ushers to come joyfully to give as unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And as we have this money, the stones will not cry out in my place. As we sing, just sing as if, as if you are the only one in this life to praise him. Hallelujah.
us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory. Give you all honors, O God. All adoration, Father. Thanks, O King of glory. In expression of gratitude, O King, because of what you've done for us, because of what this day represents, we thank you, blessed Father, for hearing and answering the prayers of your people and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Lord, we say, save now, O King. And you did save us, O God. And that, for that, we're so glad, O God. We're excited, King of glory, for you to have died on, in our place, O God, delivering us from the awful death of hell, allowing us to be part and parcel of your family. And today, we are called the sons and daughters of the living God. We give you all the glory. We give you all honors, O God. And we thank you as we have resolved today, O King, to follow you to the end. As your word has spoken today, Father, we pledge to follow you to the end, O God. That on that day, according to the book of Revelation, my God, when another cry will come from the people, O God, from the masses, O King of glory, thanking you for the salvation you have given to us, our voice will not be missing, O God. We will be part of the crowd, O God. We will be part of the people that will jubilate and glorify you and worship and serve you forever. Thank you for your word have come today, O God, unto us. Pray, righteous God, that you help us, O Father, not to forget, O King, any of the things you have spoken to us today concerning. Father eternal and all the pledges you have made, help us to come through with it, O God that in all things your name alone will be glorified. We'll continue to pray for your servant, O God, for more anointing, more grace upon his life. Yet we thank you so much for favoring us, O God, giving us Father eternal, even jobs, O God. We thank you because we recognize you as the one from whom all blessings flow, O God. It's from you we receive the blessings, O God, and the riches and the wealth we have today. And out of the, the what we have, O God, we have taken a little token, O God, to say thank you, Father Eternal, for keeping us, O God, for sustaining us, O Father. Receive, O God, our gifts, O God. Receive our tithe, O God. May it be a good smelling savour unto you as you release your blessings upon your people, O God. Good measure, press down and shaken together and running over. May men give to our bosoms, O Father. And here we're praying for those who have nothing to give today, Lord. Father, we're praying that you grant them open doors, O Father. New jobs, opportunities, O God, to earn living. That next time as we gather, everyone will have all to give. That together we'll continue to enjoy the blessings, O God, that is found in giving. We thank you, Lord. We love you. We give you all the glory. For in Jesus, much less than we have prayer, and we all say, Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I'm glad you're here today to witness the presence of God. God bless you. God bless you. Um, you may be seated, please, for final observations before we conclude our service. Amen. All right. Um, we want to use this moment to acknowledge the presence of our guests those whom today is the first time they have come to worship with us we want to appreciate you we want to show you tell you how we feel about your presence here today anyone among us whom today is the first time you've come to be with us may i see your hands please may i see the hands god bless you my sister god bless you for coming any other person Any other person among us? Okay. Uh, to you, my sister, God bless you for coming today. It's a joyful thing when we see new ones comes to worship with us, okay? And um, we are very glad you are here today. If you wouldn't mind, can you tell us your name and where you came from? And we should... Kati? Okay. Okay.
Amen, amen, amen. Okay. He said, Okay, your son is sick. Very sick. Can you come forward? Would you mind coming forward? You're going to stand in the place of your son now. And we are going to pray for him right now. Church, may we stand, please? As we pray, I'm going to anoint your hands with oil. When you go home with that hands, place it on his forehead, okay? This is just oil. Because the Bible says, is anyone sick among you? Let him call the elders of the church and let the prayer of faith be offered. And the Lord will raise the sick, okay? So this morning, I'm going to anoint your hands. And you're going to use his hands to anoint your son. Whatever be the cause of the problem in his body. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we stand against it right now. Lord, we cause the, the source of this problem, oh God. Father God, you send forth your word and your word will heal your people. This moment, Lord, we send your word out that you are the Lord who healeth our bodies. Let this young man be made whole, oh God. From the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Let there be healing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we'll give you glory, oh God. Yeah, that day you did it. You send that man, go home. Your son is made whole. We are sending the mother back to the house. Getting home, Lord. You have performed the miracle. Let thy name be glorified. Because you are God indeed. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. So abundant grace then, what do we tell our guests when they come? Boys, that is our end prayer for you. to discharge our friends on the line. Thank you very much. Those of you who are streaming online, we are very grateful that uh, you join with us today. We are very thankful that you made our time to be with us. And uh, as uh, this week is uh, called a Passion Week, we continue to be uh, talking about uh, the last day of Jesus Christ on earth. If you wouldn't mind, join us on Wednesday as well at uh, uh, 6 30 we shall be here praising and worshiping and teaching the truths of the scriptures so until then may the lord bless and keep you and then on sunday will be the easter celebration the resurrection morning the culmination of the sufferings of jesus christ and the, the vindication of the almighty god on that day so be with us here at 10 o'clock on sunday streaming online if you cannot come to the house but if you can come to the house, there is a big difference of being present. Hallelujah. Until then, may the Lord keep you in Jesus' name. All right.